Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Mary Armstrong Reiner. Very happy to welcome you here to St. John Luther Church this morning. Those of you who are here with us in person and those of you online, if you'd like to follow our service online, you can go to our website, stjohnrippon.org, and pull up our bulletin and follow along with us this morning. There are several special things and several announcements to make this morning. Uh, first of all, we want to give our condolences to Connie Hoppenstein, who is with us this morning. We're very thankful she could be with us this morning. Her beloved husband, Charlie, died last Sunday night, and um, he was a good man and a very loving person, and I'm very honored that I knew him and that I could call him a friend. And so we just surround Connie um, with our love and our prayers, and we're thankful that she could be with us this morning. Um, also, uh, the flowers this morning, the beautiful flowers, are given in honor of Smith and Miriam Hunter. Uh, ma many of their family and relatives and friends are here this morning. Uh, I won't make them stand up. I don't want to embarrass them. Uh, but we're very glad you're here this morning. They've come from all over the country to be here. Um, they were instrumental in starting this church. They were founding members. They were instrumental in this building being built. And... Um, they have come back home uh, for their ashes to be put here in rest. And you are welcome. If you'd like to stay afterwards, we will have their interment today. And we welcome Pastor Hako and Michelle, um, who have come along, come from Lilburn to be with us this morning. And Pastor Katie will be joining us for the lunch afterwards. She is preaching in Noonan today, but I invited both of them. And these are their beautiful urns that I said we should put here this morning to remember and give thanks for their lives, Mary and Hunter. And so uh, these will later, their ashes will later be poured into our columbarium, um, of which they were instrumental in also making that happen. And for their family to know, as I understand correctly, after Miriam died, um, part of the money given was to create these icons that are on the wall. And if I have the story correct, because I learn new things every week, I'll just tell you that been here three years and I'm still learning stuff. But if I got the story correct from Frank, the church helped start painting them, but it was taking a while, that's what Frank had said, and, and then they went back to the iconist and she finished them. But this was part of the gift given to the church. And so as we look at those and see those, we can remember their faithful commitment to God in this place, and we are very blessed to be able to celebrate them this morning. Our service is inside of your bulletin. We begin with Thanksgiving for baptism, and I invite you to please rise as you're able and face our baptismal font. Hallelujah! Christ is risen.
First reading, a reading from Acts chapter 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to, Mace to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart and listened eagerly to what she said by Paul. When she, was, when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be, the faithful, to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 67 will be read responsibly by whole verse. May God be merciful to us and bless us, and may the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples of equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O Lord, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our God. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Second reading, a reading from Revelations, chapter 21, verse through 10, chapter 22, verse 22 through 25. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of the heaven of God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God and the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but for those only who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is their tree of life, and its twelve, kind, twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are, are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found, nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and its servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more light, no more night. They need no light or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, 
and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. And this is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Martin Luther was once quoted to have said, If the world was to end tomorrow, I would plant a tree today. Hope. To me, that quote stands for hope. Hope in a world that seems lost. Hope in a world that seems tragic, that seems doomed. So many things. If you turn on the news, you're going to get, I'm discouraged in 10 minutes. There's just so many things out of control that we don't, we think we got it all together and we realize we don't. But I think of that quote when I think about when I was in seminary in Chicago and I had a spiritual director. And uh, spiritual directors are people who are trained to work with you on your relationship with God. They're not a therapist, although sometimes it seems like they are. But they're really there to help you zone in on your relationship with God and and where are you going in that relationship and listening and hearing what God has to say to you? Well, at our seminary in Chicago, they would encourage us to have a spiritual director every year because there was a program just down the road that uh, Catholic brothers and priests and sisters from all over the world who had been missionaries would come for this year to study. And so I was open and went. I had a different uh, sister every single year. But I remember one year, one of the sisters said to me, well, they told us to pick a tree and talk to it every day. And she told me about her tree down, down the block and that she would talk to her tree. Now that, I know, that sounds funny, right? But honestly, think about it. A tree, tree's like an animal, only a tree can't bark back at you, right? But I love that idea of having a tree to talk to. And I say that because... The scripture of Revelation today is talking about the tree in the river of life. And I think it's such a beautiful image that I want to spend a little time talking about that today. Now, first of all, so I'm going to ask you a question you may never have been asked before. Do you have a favorite tree? Yes. Raise your hand if you have a favorite tree. Okay. And if you don't have a favorite tree, do you have a favorite shrub? Like for me, I would say... Well, my brother Tim is here today, and we grew up on a farm in Illinois, and uh, we didn't have a, we didn't have, a, well, he'll remind me later, because he has a better memory than me, but I don't, the only thing I remember of a tree that flowered, we had a black walnut tree in the front of our yard, and it would put out the green balls, and we'd run over them with the car, but we never did anything with them. But it was a gorgeous, you know, it was a gorgeous tree, but it wasn't my favorite tree. I would have to say, I was thinking about this, we had pecan trees. And our mother would make us pick the pecans every fall. You know, when you're a kid, you don't like doing that stuff. And then when you're an adult, you pay to go do things like that, right? I mean, isn't that kind of funny to think about, you know? Yeah, I hated doing it as a kid. But now, I'll get out on the ground and pay you to pick up your pecans, right? But I always think about, we had this huge lilac bush in our yard. And every spring, when those lilacs would bloom and the smell would come, I would just feel like a bit of heaven had come right there to our house. That I imagine that heaven is filled with lilac bushes that were always in bloom in variety of colors of purple and the smell is so beautiful. And I also think about the lilies of the valley. 
And if you don't know lilies of the valley, I tell you to look them up. They're very little, they're very tiny, and they usually grow in the corner of a house. But I think of that, and I think of God's creation and the goodness and the hope that comes in the spring. Now, I feel for family in the Midwest because they didn't really have a whole lot of spring this year. They had snow on Easter. But we in the South, before it got too hot, we had spring, right? Remember March? Beautiful March. All, all the trees and everything in bloom. And yes, for us sinus uh, sufferers, that's not so fun. But it's still beautiful, right? Well, when you hear this story in Revelation, when you hear this image and you think about that these trees are every month, there's a different tree that grows fruit. And that the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Think about that. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. We could use some of those leaves right now. We could use the hand of God. Because there's a lot of hurt in this world. There's a lot of war and aggression. And I just want to ask, why can't we just get along? It's so easy to lose hope in this world. It's so easy to lose that sense of the light of God that is so bright that there is no need for the sun, for the light of God is so great. It's so easy to look at a tree and just walk right by it and forget that it gives us life, that it gives us fruit, that it gives us hope because it's a reminder of God's creation. And God's creation is good. For he was made in God's image, and we were made in God's image. And we get so caught up in woe is me or all the things we do wrong that we forget that God has created us for good. That God has created us to bring hope. That God has created us like a tree to bring healing to others, to each other, to be that hope of God in the world. It is so easy to lose hope, especially when we don't know what the next steps of our life are. Many, all, most of you who are part of this church know that our, my son Christopher graduated on Friday. Christopher is on the autism spectrum. He's moderate and has a lot of sensory issues. And the big question everybody asks is, what's next for Christopher? And I said, well, I don't know yet. We don't have that answer. And it would be easy to be really worried about it and really concerned, but I, I know that God has walked every step of the way with us, with Christopher, and has seen us through the most difficult of times. And I don't give up hope, because I believe in a God who loves us unconditionally, who forgives us, who cares so deeply about us, that however the rest of the world sees us, it doesn't matter. Because how God sees us is for good. He loves us. He loves us for who we are today and who we will be tomorrow. And so this passage of Revelation is a reminder to us that even when we turn on the news and we wonder what missile will go up into the air today and what will happen in Ukraine, and will there be formula for the children who need it? Even in the struggle of our own life, I hope that we remember this tree of life that flows throughout Scripture, that lives in that river of life, that reminds us that God is with us, that no matter what we are going through, no matter what we are struggling with, God is present. Amen? Amen? And so thank you for showing up, for being here, for giving thanks to God. Thank you for being willing to be a tree of life, to be a mission, a missionary of hope. Because our friends and our family, they struggle like us. But if we believe in this promise of hope, in this promise of life, then even when we struggle with the most difficult times, we know we are in the hands of God. 
We know that God will see us through everything. Smith and Miriam Hunter, who we will put their ashes to rest here today, knew that. They were founding members of this congregation. They, even as they moved away, never forgot this place where they helped to be part of the reason that this congregation exists today. They are part of the hope because even though their life on this world has ended, their family continues on in that hope that they have received from loving them and knowing them and experiencing Christ in them. And that lives on. And as I always tell people, in the midst of grief and struggle, you grieve because they are gone, but you carry on the goodness and the hope and all that they gave to you. You carry that forward into the world. And so they live on in you. And that's why no matter the doubt, no matter the struggle of what will happen in the church, no matter if we feel small or like we're on a deserted island because we preach differently than other bigger congregations around us, I hold that hope, that trust, that belief that God is the hope. It's not about the fear. Those who want us to fear in life, I don't believe that is of God. It is hope even in the midst of our own struggles and our own doubts that we should hang on to. Hang on to each other. Hold each other up. See each other through. Pray each other through. This is the gift of our faith. This is the gift of being part of a community of believers. To be there for each other. To love each other. To stand with each other and to give each other hope because hope is of Christ so the next time you walk by a tree maybe it's your favorite one say hello to it remember it is a gift from God that tree stands I asked Pastor Chris he is the son-in-law and, and he is my we were colleagues and friends he was reminding me today I forgot that Chris I was riding his tiny little truck when I was pregnant with one of my boys. But we were going to a campus ministry event. And I, you know, I just think about how God is so amazing. And so, plant a tree, as Martin Luther did. And Chris said that there is that tree. That tree is real in Germany. And that it still lives. So plant a tree, plant a bush, plant a flower, and remember the hope that God has given us in Jesus Christ and in the river of life in which the tree stands, the tree that will bless all nations with its leaves. Let us be willing to bless each other. Let us bring forward that goodness that grace, that blessing. Let us honor Christ with our life.
world and church throughout the ages, we profess our faith, the faith in which we believe. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our response to the prayers today is hear our prayer. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. Bless the ministry of our sister congregations, Augustinian Lutheran School in Guatemala, and St. Johannes in Bavaria, Grace Missions and Shaywa Orphanage in Haiti. God, in your mercy, in your prayer. shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. Protect those serving the military, especially we pray today for Chance and Sequoia. God, in your mercy, in our Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. Especially today, we pray for Kathleen, Charlie, William, Bob, Susan, and David, Maureen, April, Andy, and June, John, Sarah, Catherine, Connie, and family, Kay, Kathy, Janet, Frank, Debbie, Ken and Elaine and Alan. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy. Send blessings to those celebrating birthdays, Laura, Jennifer, and Phyllis. And those celebrating anniversaries, those celebrating baptisms, Ethan. And those celebrating anniversaries, Joe and Dawn, Cheryl and Vaughn. God, in your mercy. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assess people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy. Hear now the spoken and unspoken prayers of your people. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life and help us as we command and remember Smith and Mary Hunter this day for their family to bless them that they will continue to bring hope to this world. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving God, we also pray for the conflict in Ukraine. We pray for the starvation in Africa and for all places where there is conflict. We pray that your peace might come. We pray that the aggressors might stop. And we pray for all those who have lost loved ones through these conflicts, that they might know your love and grace in this difficult time. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the singing of the choir. <laughs>
We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true pastoral Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
rise if you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and peace. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you be seated for just a moment for the announcements? Again, we just want to say um, welcome and thank you to all the family of Smith and Miriam Hunter who are here today. Uh, the congregation is invited if you wish to stay afterwards. We will have a short internment out at our columbarium at 11.30, and then there will be lunch afterwards, and um, their family is here, so we want to welcome them and greet them. Um, we're so glad to have you here from all over the country. Uh, very grateful to have you with us this morning. Um, we do have Wednesday night dinner at 5.45, and worship both in person and online at 6.30 with choir practice afterwards. Um, we're in need of readers for Pentecost Sunday, which is in two weeks. Um, we, If you can read another language, uh, as I say, it could be alive or dead. Uh, dead is uh, Koine Greek and Latin, but um, I have a few people who said they'll read. Uh, if you're willing to stand up, you'll all stand up at the same time, read at the same time, so nobody hopefully will pick on your reading of another language, but we could really use a few more readers um, who would like to help out with that. Um, if you tell me today, please send me a text or a note because I will not probably remember. I always say, if you tell me something on Sunday, I may or may not remember. So, um, Also, next Sunday is a very special Sunday in the life of the church. We will be having confirmation of four of our young people, and that will be here at our service at 10 a.m., and then we will have a lovely reception afterwards, so we invite everybody to stay and to be a part of that. Um, I'm very excited. Amy, do you want to say something? Um, yes, we will also have a pool party at the Miller's afterwards, and everyone's invited to that as well. And the Millers are known as the Open Lutheran it's Pool the House. Pool. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the church. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, also, um, we mentioned that we're going to have a car wash from 2 to 4 here on church campus. Um, they are going to be funds to purchase supplies for this all day animal shelter. They're in desperate need of things to help take care of all the animals um, here in our county that get abandoned and neglected. So if you'd like to come out for donations from two to four, my big club kids, and hopefully, no, I'm going to go for my children to help out too. <laughs> so, uh, two to four, can we get the car clean and the donations and come see some of the wonderful leadership and the future of our district. They are awesome kids. So come on out. Thanks. I also want to mention our bucket change that we have outside is for Guatemala, for our work in Guatemala. But next week will be a special collection. We're part of churches here in this community. And uh, the funds we raise next week in the bucket change will go, part will go to our Backpack for Kids ministry. I call it a ministry, but program here in Spotted County. It's for foods for kids who really need food on the weekends. Our congregation is... One of the leaders of that, we just finished up with the meals last week. We now serve, there's about 300 kids, I don't know how many it was last week, about 300 that children in elementary schools here in our community who get food for the weekends, it's nutritional. So part of the money will go for that, and part of it will go to World Central Kitchen, which has been feeding many people who've been displaced from Ukraine in Poland and other places around there. And other congregations in this community will be doing that as well, so please... Uh, be supportive of that, and thank you for all your support uh, with Guatemala as well. That's it for the announcements, and now if you would please rise for the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the back of your bulletin, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Thank mm -hmm. you.